Good afternoon and welcome to the last session of the um, Thin Film Superconducting session today at the SBC. I'm L Larry Scipioni. I'll be uh, filling in, presenting the slides for Jim Greer uh, today. And we're going to be talking about uh, uh, high speed deposition of MGO um, growth and uh, testing. So I'll follow on the track of the conversations that we've been having um, all throughout today. Uh, our collaborators on this program is a joint effort between PVD products and uh, a group at SuperOx SR Innovations in, in Moscow. Uh, and between the two of us, we grew and characterized these, these films, and you'll see that um, played out in the talk today. Um, there's been obviously a lot of interest and has been discussed in many ways, I think, in the, in the sessions today about um, applications for HTS uh, tape. And uh, this is the applications are creating a lot of interest in the technology, but also putting a lot of pressure on the, the manufacturers to make the amount of tape that would be needed for these many applications. So what we're really focused on here is how can we get production capacity higher? Um, a lot of the applications will quote numbers, which I think we've heard today, uh, I certainly mentioned in the dynamics tutorial this morning of uh, production capacities in order of magnitude higher and prices in order of magnitude lower. So our, our goal really today is to increase uh, the throughput at a key bottleneck, which is the epitaxial MGO buff buffer layer. So uh, uh, what we want to do is uh, uh, test the growth and test the uh, performance of HTS tapes that incorporate this high speed um, uh, MGO growth product. So uh, just briefly, we're gonna talk a little bit about coated conductors. We don't need to say much, just focus on really this uh, Stanford, what is it's called, MGO deposition process. We'll describe that, just describe the equipment that, that's used for the high-speed deposition, and then finally the testing and the results of what, what, what was found. Uh, so this tape structure um, we've you've seen, I think, in the dynamics tutorial, certainly. And uh, uh, we're going to be really focusing today just on the IBAD MGO layer. This is the middle layer in here, the green layer in the stack up. It's actually a bilayer of um, two, uh, two different methods that are done se sequentially to create an epitaxial layer. And uh, this is where we're going to be focusing the discussion on the, uh, on the growth. Uh, give you a little cartoon schematic of the Stanford process. Um, in this, in this uh, instance, we have uh, a, a tape with an amorphous oxide onto which we're going to, to grow an epitaxial oxide. And the first step is an ion beam induced, an ion beam assisted deposition of, of MGO. The MGO is uh, produced by an uh, e-beam e evaporator. And the ion gun is coming in at a at a fixed direction from the side. So unlike IAD, where you might have a rotating substrate to densify a film, where uh, I, I bet in this case uses preferential sputtering to align the axes of the MGO um, domains as they grow perpendicular and longitudinally along the uh, tape. And so uh, this means that the tape along the entire length, however much it passes through the deposition zone, all has one orientation. And in a second step, the, the, the film is made thicker by a high temperature homo epitaxial growth of um, more M MGO. And this produces a, a film which has very low grain boundary misorientations along the entire length of the tape, even, there, even if it's a kilometer long. Um, so this is typically a bottleneck because in, in a lot of the tools that it, it exist in the industry, the growth rates of the MGO process typically only allow the tape to be run at about 80 to 120 meters per hour. And that's for a 12 millimeter tape. So if you compare it to some other, other applications you might see in the SVC like architectural glass, this is a glacially slow process. And it is typically the slowest line in the, in the, um, in the fab. And uh, you know, with some typical assumptions about growth conditions, you could probably pre predict you go from one line, you're going to be able to get about 1,800 kilometers a year only of tape 
coated with MGO, and that's after it's been slit to the four millimeters used in applications. So this is a real um, a headache for high volume production, especially if you consider the uh, amount of tape needed for one medium-sized fusion reactor, such as the concept that Commonwealth Fusion Systems uh, has for their uh, reactor, needing about 20,000 kilometers of tape. So the amount of tape that could come out of one line is woefully short. And certainly if you were to imagine any kind of future scaling, um, there's really a need for higher throughput in this MGO deposition. Uh, and also we need to drop the cost because the costs now are about probably about $100 per kiloamp meter and needs to get down below about 10. So how do we solve this? This is a picture of the PVD products, um, uh, latest tool. Um, and the tape in this case runs from the right to the, to the left. So if you look at the, uh, to see the chambers, there's a payout chamber, which can hold a kilometer of tape uh, at uh, 100 microns thick. Uh, we can put larger spools with thinner tape and go up to, to two microns and uh, two kilometers of tape in this machine. Then it runs through an IBAD process um, where the, uh, 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 to produce the initial epitaxial seed, then it passes through a reed chamber and the reed chamber allows real-time analysis of film quality. Then it passes through a homo epitaxial uh, process where the film is heated and made thicker and also improves the film quality further. Uh, then there's a second read analysis and finally the, the tape is take, taken up in a, in, a, in a final spool and is ready for further processing. I have a couple of pictures of the inside of the machine for you. Uh, on the left, you see the, the, the uh, seven lanes of tape being pulled over a chilled, over a chilled plate. So the deposition happens at room temperature. If you look at the, re the reflection and the amorphous oxide, you can see the dual ion beams down, down there. Uh, and uh, by having two ion beams, we're able to create a very wide deposition zone where the ion beam can cover all the lanes, but also a very long deposition zone uh, so that the film can go, can go quickly. Secondly, there's the epi system. The tape is heated. You can see that in the left panel here in the, in the image. Uh, the, the, the process typically runs 600 to 650 degrees C, and we have dual EV evaporators. This allows us to have a very long deposition zone with a lot of flux, so we can get a very uh, substantially thick film, uh, at, even at very high processing speeds. Um, so both these chambers together were designed to overcome the current bottlenecks that exist in deposition speed for this material. So what we did to test it is we uh, did a combinatorial experiment in cooperation with uh, S Innovations. They provided about 350 meter spool of, of tape with the amorphous oxide layers already present. And we did growth where we varied the speed of the, of, of the, that the tape ran, ran the evaporation rate of the material in the, in the two chambers, and also the, uh, the temperature. Um, we can vary the ion beam parameters as well. So what we do is we allow a certain section of tape to run through the machine, then change one, one or two parameters, and then uh, allow a little more to be grown. So we end up with de defined sections of tape, each which has a different uh, preparation condition and then we can see how those, how those per, per perform afterwards. Here's the, the read results after the IBAD. We see already, even after just a few nanometers of film is grown, we have, uh, we have some order in, in, in the film. And then after the epi process is, is done, we see an improvement in the crystal quality of the film. We see higher uh, number of orders in the diffraction pattern and sharper spots and lower background. So we have, so we're confident they're a very high quality film. The orientation of this stays the same over the entire length of, of the tape, uh, which is exactly what is necessary for HTS technology. After the growth, the tapes were sent back to NS Innovations and they were further processed. Um, before any uh, material was put onto the MGO, however, XRD measurements were done. And then an LMO um, lamp and manganate um, a layer was put on top 
and the XRD was measured again, and finally the tape was completed with the um, uh, Rebco layer and the, um, and the encapsulation layers. Um, and so, and then this, and then we have a, then the critical current was, was measured, and so this allows us to have a full set of characterization data on how this, this film worked. What we're going to be looking at today of all the experiments that we uh, did, the growth that we did, we're going to be looking specifically at a tape that was deposited at the highest speed, that's 350 meters per hour. This is about triple the speed which is uh, used typically in these in the, for this for this process. But the XRD scans show that even after the LMO deposition, uh, the omega rocking curves in the XRD are quite good, 3.36 degree um, uh, of, uh, of peak width. And uh, compared to the reference of the Superox standard proof process, uh, it's a it's a great match. Uh, the 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 uh, phi or the uh, uh, twist measurement of, of the of the film shows that it's uh, somewhat broader than what is found for the Superox reference, uh, but that shows that there may be some more work needed in that dimension. But again, this is the first time that we uh, that we did this. this is our first run, so we were still quite happy with what, what we found. And what was uh, seen, which was in interesting, is that the Omega scan passes the benchmark for all growth conditions that we, that we tried, both for the MGO and the LMO. What this says is that the uh, process is quite for forgiving. It has a wide process window. And that's, that's good because it gives us a lot of latitude when we start to focus on what we're going to do to improve the uh, the the the, the phi re, re results. We we know that we um, we have a wide process window to to work within. The average, the mean values were quite good all the way across the uh, board, um, and uh, so that uh, um, uh, in, indicates that the structurally very promising. After uh, that, we did the, the uh, Superox team did the crypt current measurements as well. And again, if this, they use a Teva tape star device uh, tool to measure this, and it sequentially um, uh, creates, uh, puts the uh, sections of tape into uh, cryogenic conditions and measures the critical current as a function of position along this combinatorial sample, which was about six meters long for this particular growth con condition. And those excellent uh, IC value of about 550 amps and it's very consistent along the uh, whole length of the, of the tape. And this measurement was done uh, at 77 Kelvin in the self field condition, as, as it's called. Uh, and uh, so we're very encouraged by this, this result. And it has us thinking now what might we do in the future. Um, certainly, we've already demonstrated now a 3x process improvement with this, this te technique by tripling the, uh, the speed at which the tape runs. Um, the design of the machine is, is such that tapes up to 10 times wider could be run. Now this would be in a single pass mode, which would mean we'd have to slow the speed down somewhat, but overall the net gain could be another factor of three in, the, in throughput. So combining these, these two factors, it could be foreseeable to obtain close to an order of magnitude uh, throughput improvement over standard processes. Uh, of course, if we uh, do thinner, narrower tapes and go faster, it could also be possible to um, run more, uh, do more runs of tape in a, in a given day, which is another opportunity for improving the throughput. So uh, all this needs to be tested in the, in the future. So to conclude, the MGO bottleneck can be o o overcome. Um, rather than just uh, brute force increasing the capital equipment base, smart equipment design allows much greater throughput with a very similar throughput and uh, uh, to what, what has been done pre previously. And this um, uh, de design allows us to see a path toward uh, 10x overall throughput uh, improvement. Thanks for listening. If you want to contact us further to, to discuss this, here's my uh, email and Jim Greer's email. And I thank you for your attention.